Good morning. I'm a quantum physicist and engineer, so you might wonder what on earth am I doing here at a TED Med conference? Well, I'd like to tell you about some amazing technologies that you may not have heard about before. And even if you have heard about them, you may not have realized that they promise to have a profound impact on several areas of medicine. These so-called quantum technologies harness quantum mechanics to manipulate information in ways that would otherwise be impossible. Now, quantum mechanics is the physics theory that explains how the world works at its most fundamental level. It explains how atoms behave, for example. Now, it turns out that at this atomic scale, things behave really rather strangely. For example, a single particle can be in a superposition of being here and here at the same time. That is, until someone comes along and decides that they'd like to measure that quantum mechanical superposition, and suddenly that particle is either here or here. Even more bizarrely, two particles can be inextricably linked with one another, such that doing something to this particle instantaneously affects this particle over here, no matter how far apart they are from one another. Now, if these phenomena of superposition and entanglement seem a little bit strange to you, don't worry, they should seem strange. Because after all, our brains have evolved over the millennia to deal with what our ancestors have encountered in their everyday lives. And I'm pretty convinced that if your ancestors had lived out their lives on the atomic scale, then quantum physics would seem pretty normal to us and this big world that we see around us would look very strange. <coughs> but what I'd like to talk to you about today is how quantum technologies promise to have a profound impact on several areas of medicine. The first area is in secure communication. Probably many of you have already wondered, how secure is my mobile phone when I log into the bank with it or I purchase something online? Well, in the, in the future, it's pretty reasonable to expect that those mobile phones will not only be monitoring your state of health, but they'll be communicating the results of that to your doctor. And you might very well like that information to be secure during that transmission. Well, working with colleagues at Nokia, our team at Bristol have developed a secure communication system based on quantum entanglement for precisely this sort of application. And the way it works is that you and your doctor encode information in a single particle of light, a so-called photon, and you prepare it in a superposition, like I described before, and when someone tries to intercept that information, they collapse that superposition into being here or here, and that reveals their presence, that they're listening in on your communication, and you immediately terminate that communication channel. The second area is in sensors. So sensors, as you're probably well aware, are used across healthcare, from monitoring respiration through to measuring the concentration of chemicals in the blood. Well, it turns out that sensors at their heart are just making measurements. And it turns out that quantum mechanics has something to say about the precision with which those measurements can be made. Particularly, it says that if you want to make the most precise measurement possible, then you need to use this property of quantum entanglement. So working with our colleagues at the University of Milan, we've been able to measure the concentration of a blood protein using two entangled photons. The third area is in designing new drugs for treating disease. It turns out that a quantum computer, a device that harnesses both superposition and entanglement to process information in profoundly new ways, could have a huge impact on the way we go about designing new drugs. I'm not sure how many people have thought about the process whereby a new drug becomes available to you to treat disease. But if not, you may be interested to know that this process typically takes 10 to 15 years and can consume up to a billion dollars just to make a single new drug available on the market. The reason for this extraordinary expense and time is that, in part, it's very, very hard to calculate the properties of the molecules that serve as drugs. It's so hard, in fact, 
that what we use typically is the most powerful supercomputers that are available to us today. And even with this extraordinary computational power, we still cannot perform those calculations exactly. It turns out that for one of these quantum computers, performing these calculations is relatively easy, and so it can perform those calculations much, much faster. But even more importantly, it can perform those calculations exactly. So that means that when we then go away and try to make this molecule that we've just done the calculations on to confirm that it has the properties that we'd like, that might take a great deal of money and a great deal of time to make that molecule, but we can be certain that it really does have the properties that, we'd, that we predicted it to have. Now, working together with our colleagues at Harvard University, we've been able to do some of these sorts of calculations on a prototype quantum computer to calculate the properties of a molecule with two atoms. Now, that's a fair way from designing a new drug that you might use to treat disease, but it's a very important step in the right direction. So finally, what I'd like you to do is imagine a future where your humble mobile phone monitors your state of health using quantum-enhanced sensors, that it communicates that state of health to your doctor via a secure quantum communication system, and that your doctor prescribes you a new drug that has in part been designed on a quantum computer. Thank you.